Hey everyone, Terry Video here. I've been getting a few requests for a color grading tutorial for C-Log. Over the years, I've been learning from experienced colorists and applying that to my own projects. So let's get started. First things first, download the free version of DaVinci Resolve. If you're using a different editing software, I encourage you to close that and download DaVinci Resolve because in my opinion, it's the best industry software for editing and color grading in 2021. So let's get started with this image right here. This is my friend Fraser, and this was just some test footage of C-Log and color grading and all that jazz. So you could see there are a variety of colors in this shot that we could play with, like the white, the greens, the blues. So first things first, let's create three nodes. Add node, add serial, add node, add serial and it sounds like i'm saying serial now that you have three nodes that you've added you can also hit alt s to add that go into your library and make sure you got open fx opened and you want to drag on color space transform onto the first node and color space transform onto the third node so let's get started with input color space hit the drop down menu and select canon cinema gamut and then your input gamut would be Canon Log, Canon Log 2, or Canon Log 3. That really depends on what you're shooting on. And with the Canon C100 Mark II, we are using Canon Log. And you can see that at the moment you hit Canon Log, we start introducing some colors right here. And what we want to output as right now is RE Alexa and RE Log C. And that just basically transforms your C log now into RE log C, which is really neat. And so you don't really need to, you know, buy any additional picture profile or any of that jazz. You could literally just, just manipulate it all in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, let me explain this note too before I go on. So this note too is gonna act as our RGB balancer as I like to call it. And also that's where we're gonna do, you know, adjusting our curves, the contrasts. So your input color space would be now obviously Aria Alexa because node one, that's what that's what you output it to. Your input gamma would be Ari log C. And then we wanna push it to transform it. I don't know, I don't know why I keep saying push, but you transform it to Rec 709. And now we're in Rec 709 right here. We're gonna go down to Tone Mapping Method. You could leave this on DaVinci, which is already pretty good in my opinion. If you don't have Tone Mapping on, you'll see that it, it essentially just clips, everything clips. You could start off with DaVinci, which is already pretty good, or you could do Luminance Mapping, which is essentially what I like to use. You can see a slight difference when I go DaVinci and luminance mapping, just in the highlights right here, the sky details. And then after with gamut mapping, you wanna turn on saturation compression and you could play around with that. You could desaturate the image a bit or turn up the saturation, really up to you. Default's always good. So this is where Note 2 comes in, and this is what I call balancing the RGBs. So let's go to Note 2, and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm in my curves right here. The top of the curve is your highlights, right? And also make sure you got your scopes turned on. I got my scopes turned on to Parade right now. You can see if I boost it all the way up, all the waves get crushed right to the top line, and this is so overexposed that you can't even see it in the image. Now I'm bringing it back down to default. And essentially that you wanna make sure that it's just barely touching the top line and barely touching the bottom line if you wanna do just a standard S-curve color grade. So I'm gonna add a point in my highlights and then I'm gonna bring the midtones down a bit. And then I'm gonna add some contrast to the shadows like so so you might look at this image and go like hey you know it's a little blue so there's a very easy way to just fix this and it's just to go into your primaries just balance out the rgbs the reds the greens the blues so one technique you can do is you could go to your bars 
and just dial back the blue right here. You could see it dropping. You could see the image and now it's a little more warm. It's a very, very, very small adjustment. I'm not pushing it too far. I'm gonna lift the reds a bit. Now, if you don't wanna deal with the bars, a very quick way to just solve this is just to turn up the temp like so. And you could see now the image is way more balanced and you could see in the scopes, your red and your greens and blues are very, very nicely evened out. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a high soft right here because you know the blues are touching a bit on the line and I just wanna bring it back down. So you could soften that high point very nice and easy. And I'm just bring it back down a bit. And that's why I love DaVinci Resolve. It's just all these little techniques and tools that set you up for color grading success. Everything's a lot more balanced, a lot more clean, but we're not done yet. There's still a few more steps to go. So now we wanna add another node and this node is gonna be our LUTs. Just to break it down even more, a LUT is where you just do your color grading, your stylizing, all that fun jazz. Now I'm gonna show you the technique where you just put on a LUT and you essentially slap on a LUT. You could save a lot of time if you're like me, a videographer that has to wear a lot of hats. Uh, sometimes you just don't have time to just tweak a color profile every time. You'll notice one thing with LUTs, not every LUT is appropriate for the image. So don't just go slapping on LUTs and calling it a day. Right now we have this clean white look. Now this is usable. Um, if I go in my node key, if I turn the gain down to zero and then I slowly increase the intensity, like this color grade is suitable for the image. So we're gonna go with the light tones and first things first, dial it back to zero because that's way too intense. And then I'm slowly gonna just bring it back to a point where I feel it's suitable, like, like so. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna add a layer note to this, which is a new type of note that we're gonna add. So you got your add serio and now add layer. I'm gonna add one more note here, by the way. So add a layer node and then add a serial node right here. Now, before I hit the skin, there's one thing I wanna do and just show you even more what I'm talking about, the logic behind this. Go to your scopes, go to your vector scope and make sure you got skin tone indicator right here. So click that, make sure you show skin tone indicator. Basically what skin tone indicator is, is it's a reference point telling you that the skin is looking natural. Now I'm gonna show you what happens when you push an image too far. So you can see I'm introducing a lot of blue scion and you can kind of see right here, like it's flying off the skin tone indicator. It's not even on right now. And it makes a lot of sense. Look at the image we're working with. What is this? This is way, way too much. Let me reset it. So essentially what we're doing is we're qualifying the skin. We're making sure that our skin tones are isolated. So no matter what we do with the color grade, it'll always, the skins will always be consistent and I'll show you what I mean right now. So qualifier, picker, hit the skin tone and then highlight it. Hit shift H, highlight your selection, hit the feather tool right here, feather it out like so. So you see we're doing pretty well here. It's right on the line, but just to be sure, Let's go into our Windows tool right here, hit Windows, hit Eclipse. And you just wanna isolate and focus on this face area. So all of this, it's not reading all of this data right now in the image, it's just reading the face. And you can see it is just above the line a bit. It's not too bad. That's where I usually like to have it, just right above the line, just touching it. Um, I'm gonna go into my log wheels right here, my offset, and you got your midtones as well. And I'm just gonna just push it a little right on the line. And you can see if I push it to the blue scion, 
this is way off. You can see how blue his face is, so this is completely wrong. What you want is you want just right on the line, like so. And this is a neat trick I learned from Avery Peck. I just like to introduce a little red for that natural skin tone. I'm gonna just pump it a little right on the line a bit and just make those adjustments like so. Obviously yours will be a little different than mine. So once you do that, hit Shift H again to de de highlight um, the selection. If that even makes sense, de highlight is that a word? You want to link the key output of this node number five to the key input of node number seven, and you link it like so, and go into node number seven and invert that selection. So you're making adjustments just in the background and not on his face. And on node number five, you're making all the adjustments on his face. And what you wanna do is you wanna turn down your gain on node number five. And you have to remember that we made these adjustments with the midtones and offset. And that is where you get slowly just introduce um, some of that, those qualifications that you did like so, just introduce it. We are going back to number seven right here. We're gonna add a more of a global adjustment layer. So hit Alt S. Now you have to understand this global adjustment layer isn't affected by any of these other nodes. This is gonna be whatever change we make here, it's gonna affect all the nodes before it. So what I want to do is I want to turn the saturation down a bit because I think it's a little oversaturated. With this global adjustment layer, maybe another thing you want to do is you add another node and put some film grain on it, 35 millimeter. Now you can see I got some natural film grain, just like the movies. Um, and these are all optional, really, really up to you now. Uh, you can also add a glow and just soften it up a bit on the spread. Cool, neat little trick too, is you could go back on node number five and if you feel like the face isn't sharp enough, you could go to the sharpen tool and just sharpen it just a tad bit. So the face is a lot more visible and sharp. This is just little, um, little neat little tricks you can do because you know you isolate it, the skin and the face. If you want to make an adjustment to this LUT, all you have to do is reset the node grid here and maybe one we want to do like an orange and teal kind of look. So I'm just going to double click and now there's more of an orange teal kind of gray to it. And you can see it's a little intense. So again, we go to our node key turn the key output all the way to zero, and then slowly, 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 slowly introduce it. All right, so let's take a look at a before and after. So this is before right here, no color grade, and this is after. And this is with the orange and teal preset. Obviously, this is a more pushed look uh, with the orange and teal. But I say it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool like what you can do and how far you can push the colors in DaVinci Resolve and just make things really fit your storyline, whatever that storyline may be. Because we could obviously just go back into the list lot right here, reset it. Um, we could do a warm tone. So this is like a more natural look. And I'm gonna dial it just like so. And this is a very quick adjustment, but you could see like now we have a different look and this is a more of a natural type of grade right here. Now, if you're interested in the LUTs, I have the link to all the LUTs in the description box down below. Uh, feel free to use it in your own projects. Make sure you do the color space transform like I did in this video for the best results and make sure you're not just slapping on the LUT and calling it a day. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Hope that was helpful. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.